suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. The sixth commandment is short and explicit. Thou shalt not kill. Yet there are exceptions to the rule, regrettably beyond number. A man who kills is a murderer or a hero, depending upon the circumstances. And circumstances alter cases, such as the circumstances of a people's struggle for freedom. We offer you a neat point of morality to ponder as we present Escape to Death, starring Mr. Francis Lederer. And now... Mr. Francis Lederer in Escape to Death. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Outside, it's snowing more heavily now. Covering the streets of Budapest with soft whiteness. Covering the old, uglier snow and ice with their patches of dirty gray and angry red. The red of the blood of the freedom fighters. <laughs> the fools. A little more brandy, Dr. Golner. Thank you. <clears throat> and tell me, doctor, how do you find it treating Russian soldiers? <laughs> About the same. <laughs> you know, the dying scream, the sick one's curse. The ones who are not so bad <laughs> make eyes at my nurse. <laughs> the man is the same regardless of the uniform. <laughs> I feel warm and safe. Here with me are Laszlo Kogosh, former head of the secret police and now deputy premier, and Marshal Nikolai Chekhov, Russian commander in Hungary. I must admit I am quite flattered by the attention of these important men. And that is where you come in, doctor. Uh, <laughs> forgive me, I... Uh, what were you saying? The subject was devotion to duty and country. Comrade Kogos was just observing how hard you have worked to preserve Hungary. Well, after all, Commander, I am a doctor. It is my mission in life to, to save, not to destroy. Well, I, I look at it this way. In medicine, there are quite often times when a cancerous growth must be excised to save a life. At the moment, Hungary is overrun with a capitalistic malignancy these idiots have chosen to call freedom. Freedom. Freedom from what? Themselves or those who have always defended them? Kogosh, you were right. Dr. Gerlner is the only man for the job. Job? <laughs> what sort of a job? It, well, not that I would question any assignment. Doctor, you have been selected for an extremely dangerous mission. You are going to escape to the West. Escape? Why, you... You must be joking. Hardly a joke, Doctor. But why should I escape? I, I'm a supporter of the new regime. I am a member of the party. My wife and my children are here. My, my career is here. My very life is here in Budapest. Exactly. Nevertheless, you will escape to the West. And if your mission is successful, return to us. But I don't understand. Look carefully at the snapshot, Doctor. Do you recognize this woman? Of course. That is, uh, this is uh, Corina Zanova. I delivered her child a number of years ago. Wasn't she minister of something or other in Imre Nagy's cabinet? Indeed she was. Also, she has escaped us. But we know where she is. A refugee camp just outside Neustadt in Austria. About 25 kilometers from the border. And... You want me to go after her? Correct. You were her doctor. She has a broken shoulder by the bullet of an idiot who could not shoot straight. What is more natural than for you to help her? But uh, how, how can I? You will carry a special hypodermic needle that has been dipped in a powerful poison. Is there anything finer than an injection to soothe the nerves? Why, this, this is monstrous. Karina Zanova must not live to tell her story to the United Nations people. She's the only one who knows the truth about what has happened in Hungary. What she has to say is exactly what the West wants to hear. That will not do. But I'm a doctor. I'm not a, a secret agent. You are a secret agent now, doctor. 
But there must be others better qualified. None more so than you. But what you suggest is, is murder. The elimination of an enemy of the state is an act of the highest heroism. Ideological nonsense, right? I, I, I can't do it. I, I'm a healer. I'm not a destroyer. You spoke a moment ago of your children, your wife. Yes, but what, what do they have to do to with... Say it? nothing of your career and your life. All of these can be brought to an abrupt and untimely end. Why, you wouldn't. You know better than that. Of course we would. Very well. What must I do? Uh, that's better. And uh, now for the details. We have prepared a special pair of shoes. The right heel contains an MVD identification tag to show in case you are taken by my man. The left, the poison needles for the hypodermic. You will also have the Hungarian army password for the next three days. This should protect you in the event of an arrest. Well, how, how will I get across the border? A train leaves Budapest for Gjör and Chopron at daybreak tomorrow. You will be on the train. Now look at this photograph. Study it well. This is Lajos Molnar. You must find him the moment you board the train. He's one of the freedom fighters' most daring border runners. Twenty miles west of the city, the train will be stopped and searched by Russian soldiers. You must persuade Molnar to hide with you. Take him to the third coach from the engine. A car reserved for children. Once there, you will probably be safe. Is that clear? I suppose, Commander, but... What is the reason for this uh, little game? Simply this. Molnar has been over the border a dozen times that we know of. You will use him to get across safely. I see. Is that all? No. There is one more thing. You will earn the party's undying gratitude if you make this Herr Molnar's last trip across the border. Well, then... Then you demand two murders. Dear doctor... Not murders. Two blows for the preservation of Hungary. Yeah. Yes, of course. Well, now, if you will excuse me, I... I shall try to get some sleep. By all means, doctor. And pleasant dreams. There were no pleasant dreams that night. There was no sleep. There was no alternative. No escape. Before dawn, they came for me, took me to the secret police headquarters and gave me the shoes. Then they turned me loose with a group of political prisoners. At the West Station, I board a creaking train and wait and wait. Until finally it lumbers out through the yards. Now begins the race with time. Desperately, I push through the cars, through corridors, crammed with standing feet. Excuse me, please. Oh, uh, forgive me. I, I must get through here. Thank you. Do you mind, miss? Where is this fool? I push, I, I shove, I, I twist and turn through an endless crush of packed humanity. The click of wheels singing their song of urgency. Stop it. My 20 miles are gone. The Russian guard will come aboard in a minute. And then, at the last, I see the man I must contact. Lyle Schmoll now. No wonder I had not found him. He was headed the same direction as I, moving forward. I'm all now. I'm all now. We're going the right way, but hurry. Uh, you said something. Don't stop now. Move. The Russians will board at the rear. It is their custom. We must reach the coach for the children. Push! I will say one thing for this thick-chested, hard-eyed man. He wastes no time with foolish questions. With him leading, we soon reach the vestibule of the children's coach. Now, what is your plan? Be sure of this. If there is trouble, I will shoot. You first. You are armed? Of course. Now listen to me. They are looking for one man, Lajos Molnar. Are you trying to die? Come, we have one chance. Inside. See, down the 
hall there, behind the knot of youngsters. Hurry. What are you doing? You can't stay here. How old are you, son? Eight. Do you understand about the Russian soldiers and those who fight them? They killed my father. I hate them all. Good. We will hide you, son. Now you will sit on my chest. Easy. And this lad, sit across this pen. What will we do if they should spot us? Shoot I. At their necks are about. That will keep the fire over the children's head. Then we must leave the coach and fight from the best of you. Son. Y- yes, sir? If they see us, you boys dive at their feet and stay down. Is this clear? I will not stand for heroics. Yes, sir. drag into individual lifetimes. Chekhov and his NVD symbol are worthless. If they come one now, we'll shoot. The pressing weight grows heavy on my chest as the time drags by. Now the children suddenly grow quiet. We know they are here. You there! Have you seen a big man with black hair and a brown suit? We know he came this way. There may have been another with him. Speak up! Oh, I know. I know where they are. <laughs> they are hiding. All right, speak. Where? They have gone through to the engine. Two of them. We saw them when they passed. Good. You hear that, comrade? Let's go. This was not the time to breathe freely. Not yet. This was the time to wait with your heart in your throat. And then at last comes the sound we are praying for. The test is over. The train is moving again. All right, get off. You must wear it back. Here, this is for you. Give her some, then spread it around so all will have a bite. Chocolate? Why in the world, Roland? Where else? When one is on the open, one needs energy, especially running the border. You plan to cross again? Perhaps. Come. So I had enlisted the aid of the finest blockade runner in Hungary. We weave our way through the children to the exit. Then abruptly, Mona stops. He turns, driving the barrel of his automatic into my stomach. Now, my friend. What? What are you doing? Men have tried to pull this one on me before. You arranged to save my life, then learn how and where I operate. But uh, never let it be said I was too hasty. I will give you just 30 seconds to explain. How you knew my name? And how you know the Russians would board this train today? In a moment, we continue with... Suspense. This is Johnny Baker with Communism on the Spot. One of the great things about our democracy is that anyone can disagree with what's being done by the government in Washington. Not only that, but the government itself will protect the individual's right to have his say. If enough people see eye to eye, they can vote the leaders out of office. This is not possible under the Soviet's one-party system, where only one approved slate of candidates is offered the voter. The people, therefore, have no way of publicly expressing their disapproval of governmental policies or the conduct of high officials. The only way Soviet politicians are put out of office is through the purge, their removal by blacklisting, transfer, or physical liquidation. And now... We continue with Escape to Death, starring Mr. Francis Letterer. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Is he bluffing? This huge man who has a reputation as the best blockade runner in Hungary? Or does he mean to press the trigger of the heavy automatic he has shoved into my middle? 
Your time is almost gone, my friend. Speak quickly. Well, if you must kill me, you must, I suppose. Perhaps in your place, I might do the same. All right, all right. Say your piece. I shoot not from pleasure, but necessity. I'm a doctor, Franz Gellner. Some time ago, I made the mistake of criticizing our emasculated premier in public. I was arrested and held for a month. This very morning, I was released. What has that to do with your knowing my name and that I would be on this train today? Well, last night, many patriots were executed. I was marched out with a Russian firing squad, but, well, for some reason, they did not shoot me. On the way back, two of the men were joking about how pleasant it would be when they could do that to Lajos Molnar. The other replied he would like to see your face when the westbound morning train was stopped. I see. Now the next question. How did you know what I looked like? Well, doctor. Well, to be frank, I, I do not function well with the gun pressing against my lower abdomen. <laughs> Thank you. Well, as for the question, it is impossible to answer to your satisfaction. I had only a vague idea of your appearance. When I saw someone about right, I, I spoke to him. Well, you were the only one who did not give me a blank stare. To be truthful, I'm still not sure. Are you the much-hated Molna? A bit of chocolate, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> traveled by rail only as far as Dior. From there we bought transport to Jorna, where Mona obtained a car of ancient vintage. Now the early darkness has descended on us. The bitter wind brings with it a light snowfall that makes it hard to see the road ahead. The old car's dim lights. How do you feel? Not badly. <laughs> Except for my feet. They are freezing. You sure you understand about this crossing? I think so, but you had better go over it again. We leave the car at the edge of the woods, a few miles from Boschok. The forest extends into the Austrian border. Once there, you will surrender yourself to the Austrian border guards. They will take you to the town of Rechnitz. When you have identified yourself, they will ship you up the line to a big camp outside Neustadt. Then uh, you are not going with me? Not for long. <laughs> The Austrians and I have a working agreement. When I do not bring much, I do not stay long. But uh, such a risk. <laughs> Is it worth what you make? I don't like that remark, Doctor. There is no profit. What I take across is information. For the world. For Hungary. swiftly now. Eyes burn from straining to see Russian vehicles. Twice we turn off across country, driving without lights to avoid oncoming Soviet trucks. Then we reach the wooded sector. We check our guns, leave the car, and begin the long, nerve-wracking walk to the border. Hold Keep down. Hear that? Russians? Oh, more tourists. Why can't they learn to be quiet? There they go. Look at that woman run. <laughs> Hurry. Down this way while they are busy. It is a nightmare. Running this way, bent over. Makes me realize my age. Suddenly a foot catches me in the back and I go down my face against the hard ice. I roll over gun ready. But Molna is down on one knee facing away from me. Then I realize what had made him so fat. It wasn't all coat. There are two of them in Russian uniform. He gets both before they can fire. And we are up again, running. At last, he grabs him by the arm. See that open space? On the other side is Austria. But the border guards, where are they? Not far. They will have you before you go another quarter mile. Wait here while I hide my spray gun. Instead of waiting where he said, 
I creep up behind him. When he kneels beside a fallen tree to hide the Sten gun, I do it. It is easy. Too easy. This first murder. I'm running in zigzag pattern across the open snow into Austria. I don't get far before two men in foreign uniforms step out from behind the trees. Halt! Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ja, natürlich. Gut, kommen Sie mit. The guards lead me over a trampled path in the snow to a long, low shack, full of tourists. One or two of them are near hysteria, and all of their faces show the reaction of overexposure. Some sit shivering alone. Most huddle before the curved iron stove and try to dry their sopping feet. There are two men, however, who sit to one side and watch the arrivals. After a moment, one of them gets up and comes over to me. I recognize him for what he is, and I become acutely conscious of the MVD symbol in my right heel. Your name, sir? Dr. Franz Gellner, recently of Pest. The doctor, huh? Hmm. You'll be a welcome addition. Are you asking political asylum? Yes, I... I'm asking political asylum. All right, doctor. We'll try to rush you through. I'll go and see if I can't scare up a medicine kit for you. There are a number of cases that need help. Excellent. I will be only too glad to help. Uh, just a moment, doctor. Your right shoe. I look down and my heart stops. The trick heel. The one with the Russian secret police identification in it has come loose. Now, it is slid halfway off the heavy walking boot, its thickness protruding beyond the back of the shoe on its grooved track. A man could break his neck with a heel like that. Here, let me get my gun. I'll tap it back in place. There, all fixed. <laughs> Isn't that better? Yes, <laughs> much better. The worst is over. All that remains is to be patient until I can be moved up the highway to Neustadt. They find a medical kit for me, and I become the angel of mercy again, repairing, mending, curing, but thinking only of my plans for Corina Zanova. Finally, the day arrives. All right, all right. This is the relocation center at Neustadt. All families remain together. A single woman on the left, please. Well, excuse me, are uh, you the Hungarian doctor they said would be with this group? Correct, Dr. Franz Gellner. At your service. You can't know how glad we are to see you. Uh, come with me, please. Thank you. Uh, you may not realize this, doctor, but you have a number of friends here. People you have treated at some time or other. <laughs> Yours must have been a very large practice. <laughs> Oh, fair size, I suppose. <laughs> of course, I... <laughs> Obstetrics was my specialty, you understand? I imagine I do know quite a number of the women here. <laughs> Say you, doctor. Um, incidentally, I, I don't suppose you have happened across a woman named uh, Corina Zanova, have you? Hmm. Both she and her child, let's see, I... Uh, oh, yes, Aya was her name. They were patients of mine. Uh, are they here? Oh, now, isn't that a shame? I think they have just gone. The Americans are flying them to New York either today or tomorrow. But I, I will be glad to check for you. Meanwhile, please make yourself at home here in my quarters. Uh, go in, wash up, while I see about Corina Sanova. I go into the washroom, but not to wash up. I flip off the heel of my left shoe, take out the poison needle and attach it to a hypodermic from the medicine kit. And then I, I pace the colonel's quarters, waiting, waiting. It is too late for the plan to fail. She must still be here. She has to be. Well, doctor, you are in luck. Corina Sanova has not yet left. She is over in the clinic this moment. She was quite pleased to hear you had escaped. We go quickly across the compound to a large building. 
and in through a crowded entryway. Finally, we reach an inner room. And there we are. Just the Austrian colonel, myself, and Corina Zanova. Doctor, Doctor Kernan, how very nice. Almost seven years since little Aya. You should see her. Oh, she's here somewhere. She still remembers you well. Well, you too will excuse me, huh? Uh, don't keep her too long, Doctor. The plane leaves in an hour. No, of course not. Now the final moment has arrived. And I'm nervous for the first time. The long hunt is over. I put a bag down. I open it, trying to keep my fingers from trembling as I remove the deadly needle. Well, Doctor, is it not a blessing for us being here, away from the twisted minds and the bored thinking at home? Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> um, tell me, Corina, uh, how has that, that shoulder been treating you? Oh, but like any broken shoulder, I guess, to you as my doctor, I admit, it does hurt, especially at night. I thought so. Well, roll up your sleeve. I'll give you a little shot. A, a new tranquilizing drug. Oh? To make you feel better on the plane. Uh, all right, doctor. Thank you. Mommy! Mommy, I heard... Oh, there he is, doctor! Doctor! <laughs> oh, I am... <sighs> Do you not know never to touch anyone when they have a needle in their hand? Now you have made the doctor stab himself. Oh, I'm sorry, Mommy. Will it hurt? Mommy, he, he looks so funny. What is it, Doctor? What's the matter? Um. Doctor! Doctor! Suspense. In which Mr. Francis Letter starred in William N. Robeson's production of Escape to Death by E. Scott Floor. Listen. Listen again next week when we bring you another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Supporting Mr. Letter in Escape to Death were Norma Jean Nelson, Margie List, Charles Radelak. Jack Crucian, Dick Beals, Fritz Feld, Paul Dubov, and Ted DeCorsia. Suspense. 